state command and control arrangements for bushfire have been in place now for, for three years and when we established them the intention was to provide guidance to everybody particularly people working at incident level and at regional level about how they could make the state emergency response plan work. This year we have made some changes. Firstly we've reorganised the document so that it, it reads a little bit better and hopefully the logic of the document flows well for those people who are using it. But in particular we've, we've picked up some particular points which we think are important. The arrangements make it clear that normal agency operational arrangements should be in place for most incidents and for other incidents other than bushfire. But there are triggers that we apply to ensure that regional control and also the state control team are doing their work at the appropriate time. When you look at the arrangements you'll see that there's a new appendix at Appendix 1 which gives you a lot of information about what those triggers are. And for those of you who use the arrangements on a regular basis, we encourage you to take some time to look at that and ask questions. Be confident that you know what those triggers mean. And in particular, they relate to when a regional control team will start exercising their functions and also when the state controller and his team will start exercising their functions. There's a couple of things in the arrangements which we think are particularly important for people to remember and to understand. And for those of you who are involved in incident management or involved in working at CFA district level, at DSC regional level or at MFB regional level, the role of the regional control team and the agency commander within a regional control team is very important. We'll just talk about that for a moment. The regional control team, as I think most of you know, is made up of the regional controller who's appointed to exercise that function and that person can be from any of the agencies. But in that team, each of the agencies have a person who is their agency commander and they've got a very, very specific task as well as providing advice to the regional controller on what may be happening, what priorities should be addressed and what issues are starting to cause concern in their area of responsibility. One question that an agency commander should be able to answer at any time is, can your agency provide incident management teams or resources or some other capacity to support this firefight? And they should be able to respond to that question straight away. Their task is, with the support of their agency personnel, to know at any point in time what their agency capability is and be able to commit their agency to resourcing any particular incident. The other thing that we need to make sure people understand is how an emergency management team and a regional control team might work together, but also how the emergency management team works with an incident management team as well. At a regional level, the regional controller will form the regional EMT. The same sort of principle applies at an incident level and the incident controller is the person who will convene an emergency management team at that level. Victoria's uh, emergency management arrangements are very strongly focused on the role of an emergency management team and this is where many of the support agencies and the other organisations that are critical to helping us respond to any incident, particularly major incidents. So these are some of the critical parts of the command and control arrangements. I know people understand the notion of the line of control and the agency chain of command, and we've talked about that in this DVD. The things that I want to reinforce with everybody this year is there have been some changes to the command and control arrangements for bushfire this year. In particular, as I said, they relate to the triggers that apply when a regional controller will start exercising their function and when the state controller exercises their function. These arrangements are a fundamental part of how we organise ourselves for response to emergencies, particularly bushfire emergencies. And I encourage you all to be familiar with them and have them available to you so that you understand how we work. <laughs>